Today we're going to have a look at a very interesting pen, but this is the first video I'm shooting after the uh, Armando Simoni Club Bologna Extra Wild Dark side, uh, where I did a, another thing where I sort of showed the, the pen with the camera tilted down. A lot of people like that, but what you didn't like was what I like and don't like, and then you didn't like it. No, the thing was, when I say the, when I when I talk about the things that I like about the pen, don't like about the pen, uh, a number of people commented that they, they wanted to see my face. Uh, so that, that if, if that is, if that's a crucial part of your SB Rebrown experience, then I'll, I'll, I'll try to accommodate that. So from now on, I will try to do a short talk here. I will show you the box here because with the camera tilted down, I don't have a lot of space. Some of these pens have enormous boxes. I'm going to show you the box right here. We'll tilt the camera down. I'll show you the pen, the parts, etc. I'll do a writing sample, and then I'll talk about what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And that's how it's going to be. That's what I can do. Okay. Today we're going to be talking about this pen. Came in a massive box. Massive box. Was lent to me by Applebaum. Uh, and this is the uh, Montegrappa Nazionale. Uh, as I said, massive box. I just took off the cardboard sleeve. Um, now I have to sort of open this. It could be a shoe box if you, you have very small feet. Um, nice wooden thing. Little flap opens. Out comes this box. Um, and then you have this wooden box. Just making sure to open it from the right side. I'm just taking out some stuff. So here you have the, uh, the box, a bottle of ink. Uh, the, the pen has a little bed which you can take out under that as a little booklet. Actually, it's a, it's a pretty big booklet, uh, which, uh, which has uh, the filling instructions and such. Uh, it's kind of the, the, the standard stuff. Uh, it's not, not bad, little fold-out thing, etc. So there's that. Oops, sorry. Little polishing cloth. I'm gonna put that box down. It has a magnetic closure, by the way, so it doesn't accidentally pop open. You see the magnet right there. Sorry, sorry if that's loud. I'm trying to do that as carefully as I can. Little Montegrappa baggie for the uh, for the pen. Here is uh, yet another polishing cloth. You can really polish away there. And then the Nazionale Flex. Come back to that. Um, it's a cute booklet. I, I like how this is put together. Uh, you got some uh, some information on the pen, what 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 celluloid it is, uh, the nib grade. And it's actually written in in hand, which I, I I do think is very nice. And they were really going for an Art Deco uh, theme here, so that's that's featured in the booklet and the artwork, which I think is is quite nice. Okay, that was the box. You need to see the pen. So we're going to pan down, and we're going to do right that. See you in a sec. All right. So let's look at the pen. Here we have the pen. So I'm going to cover the past the pen in a little bit more detail, but just some more information on the pen. So the Nazionale flex pen made by Montegrappa, 1930s Art Deco inspired. Uh, I, I would say it, it, it does look a bit like a vintage pen. It does give me that, that, that feeling to its si as to its size, the shape, etc. Celluloid, that's nice. Uh, celluloid is, is coveted by many uh, pen collectors just because of the the looks, the feel, it's, it's a very special feel. It, is, it, it does, to me, have a slightly different feeling than, than, say, acrylic does. And you have beautiful acrylics too, but it, it's, just, it's just different. Uh, it, it also has a very peculiar smell. Yep, it smells uh, a bit like camphor, which, which is used in the, in the, the, the manufacturing process. So it, it's just a, a different feeling. And that sounds weird, but it, it, it's different. If you've held a celluloid pen, you may know what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's pretty nice. We have silver uh, details. Um, at least two out of three are silver. Um, the center band has hallmarks. This band has hallmarks. Um, and uh, the, the, the clip and the clip ring do not. So I'm not sure if that's actually silver. There is a hundred pens with a fine nib and there is a hundred pens with an extra fine nib. Uh, the number is at the bottom of the ring there. Let me see if there was anything else I wanted to tell you. Okay, so this is a marble green celluloid. Uh, and as I said, a vintage look. Uh, and I, I think that is quite nice. So as to the nib itself, that is a flex nib. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit more about that when I uh, show you the details of the pen. I think that makes more sense. So let's have a look at this pen in a bit more detail. 
Okay, so let's look at the Monte Grappa Nazionale in a little bit more detail. Top of the cap, finial, is this black material. Same thing as the uh, end of the barrel. Now what else have we got? There's the clip, and as I said before, this center band is silver. This is silver. Uh, the center band says Monte Grappa on one side, and on the other side it has all the hallmarks for the silver. Same thing as the little band down there, also has some hallmarks. And this band also has the number, in this case number 14 of 100 uh, with this particular nib. And um, clip is stiff but springy enough to use, I would say. And I will say that this gives me that, that vintage feeling. Nice celluloid, that sort of cracked uh, material, I, I kind of like that, it looks, it looks cool. Uh, and it, it does have a vintage uh, shape, uh, this, this, this rounded off thing at the, the, the finial, for example, I think is, is, is definitely vintage in, in feeling. Might have been nice if the whole pen would have been the celluloid, but okay. Down to the barrel, this is a piston turning knob because it is a piston filled pen. It makes a bit of noise, but piston filled pen. Put away the cap. Here we have the section, as you can see, slightly hourglass shaped, tapers down, flares out again, and fairly large threads, uh, which I don't find very sharp, so that's, that's kind of nice. Um, it's not a huge pen, but that's fair. Many vintage pens were about this size, so I think that's, that's just a, a staying true to character, uh, so to speak, of what they were trying to do. Okay, then we have this, this flex nib. Now, this nib we have seen before. Uh, I have seen similar Jovo nibs uh, with these cutouts. Edison has them, Franklin Christoph has them. Um, I, I am not 100% sure this is a Jovo nib, but given that it has the exact same cutouts, uh, I'm assuming it is a Jovo nib. Here we have the feed, uh, which I'm, I'm fairly sure is plastic. Um, and Again, the nib. The nib has some nice scroll work on it. Sorry, I'm trying to catch that without blinding you with the light. So some nice scroll work. Uh, it says Monte Grappa. I'm just bringing it a little closer. It says 14K, uh, and uh, um, that's uh, that's that's pretty much uh, all all as to it as to this pen. Um, so I, I I think they 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 definitely uh, uh, made for a. Uh, uh, an, an interesting looking pen where they, they really uh, went well with the, the, the vintage theme uh, they were trying to, uh, to, to go for. Okay, so let's have a look at how the pen writes. Sorry, just putting the cap out of the way. Had a bit of a hard start there, but I think that was simply because I had it uncapped. Uh, Monte Grappa Nazionale Flex. Nale, sorry. And this is the extra fine uh, 14K nib, uh, and the ink is Waterman Serenity Blue. Okay. Fast writing. No real skips. Uh, there's definitely some feedback, but hey, it's an extra fine nib. Uh, that's, that's often how it is. Uh, as to its wetness, Not particularly wet, not particularly dry. I think it's it's pretty well tuned. Okay, now I know what you really want to see the the, the flexiness. So very carefully, I'm adding more and more pressure, and you can see the nib starts to run dry. So I'll slow it down a little bit. It needs to start up. This is the problem that that plagues a lot of modern pens, and that's the issue. It simply is not vintage flex. 
Um, I, I know everybody wants it, but we're just not getting it. Having said that, if you modulate your speed a little bit, you can definitely get some nice line variation out of it. Those cutouts do work, and it does make for a flexy nib, for sure. It's just not vintage flex. Okay, reverse writing, for those of you who find that fascinating. Um, it's possible, it's already an extra fine nib, so maybe this takes it from extra fine to extra extra fine or something, um, but you, you can make the nib write even finer if you really need that. Okay, the end of the writing sample. Let's look at some things I like about it and some things I dislike about it. Okay, so what do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, they went for a sort of vintage uh, feel, Art Deco, and I think they succeeded because when you look at this, maybe from a distance, but when you look at this, I do think you get that sort of like a vintage pen feel. It's not an enormous pen, it's a perfectly usable uh, size, but both the shape and size do remind me of vintage pens. Celluloid, always nice, beautiful materials, feels very pleasant, very smooth. Uh, I, I appreciate what they did there. They, they, they picked a theme and they, they went with it, and I, I think it, it works well. As I said, celluloid, always nice, so that's cool. The nib, I've already shown you, but I do like that engraving. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite intricate, and uh, I, I think that, that looks uh, uh, kind of nice. Uh, I, I do enjoy that. And um, uh, it's the, the nib that we've seen before, Jovo nib, used by other companies, Franklin Christoph, um, uh, uh, Edison, um, and it, it definitely offers line variation. Now, my biggest issue with the pen is it's, it's marketed as, as flex um, and there seems to be some confusion over what exactly constitutes flex. If this is to be a, a homage to vintage pens, this is certainly not that. It doesn't flex like any 14 karat vintage flex pen would. That's just the way it is. Those nibs are softer, they have more line variation, it's a different experience. What I will say is, the pen does allow you to write with line variation, which is what a lot of people like. It does add character to your handwriting, it is fun to play with, but it's not vintage flex. The nib does not flex as much as a vintage flex nib would, and nor does it flex as easily. Having said that, it works, and as I said, it does allow you to add line variation to your handwriting. The other thing that we should kind of discuss is the price. At 1100 euros, this is an expensive pen. Let's face it, it's not pocket change. And it does have some things going for it. Very limited, there's only 100 pens of each color. It has a gold nib, it has a piston filler, it's made out of celluloid. It even has silver parts on it, but it is expensive. Whether that's really worth it, uh, I will say it is a well-made pen. It's all nicely put together. There is no sharp corners. The tolerances are all fine. So in that regard, it's it's. Uh, I, I'm I'm not I'm not saying that it, it is overpriced, uh, but it's by no means inexpensive, and that's just the way it is. So if that is something, I mean, if this is something that appeals to you, I can see that people would 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 spend this amount of money on it, but. Again, it's, it's definitely not a, a super affordable pen. And even though I see some features that we often look for in more expensive pens, like, say, a piston filler, uh, it's, it's, it's simply not cheap, and that's just the way it is. So whether it's worth it, that is up to you. Uh, what I will say is I do see a well-made pen. Um, just don't expect a vintage flex pen, but if you like something, it's a bit of a throwback to, to vintage pens. I think you could do worse than, uh, than get this, for sure. Okay, a kind thank you again to Yoast for lending me this pen. I appreciate it. Uh, I hope this was useful. High resolution pictures as well as uh, measurements of the pen will be on the website sbarybrown.com. I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Bye.